We're back, we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. Guys, please make sure you subscribe to Cat Culture. Remember, link pin on top of the chat in my community tab and also in my bio. Remember, we go live each name Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 o'clock Eastern Time with my good man Prince Hakeem and my good man New Jordan Era. When you go over there and subscribe to Cat Culture, remember, go to the community tab over there as well. We got the Cat Culture Radio t shirt. Also, Prince Hakeem just dropped out a really dope book. Go ahead and check it out. Support the platform because that's why I be at each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, if you want to see me there, I'll be over there on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, hope to see you guys there. Come support the platform. Have a good good time with us. Make sure you have your drink and let's just vibe and have a good time. So, today I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about it the other day about Silicon Valley Bank. But today, I was just doing my research about Silicon Valley Bank and also the banking system, how they run. And I think people are already aware that the banking system pretty much makes the United States. The United States runs based off the bank. If the bank fell, the United States fell. That's why the government, the FDIC, have to step in when you see a situation that, the situation that transpired with, the, um, with Silicon Valley Bank because the United States run off the banking system. <laughs> That's the thing. And not only that, people, remember, majority of people's resources are in the bank. When I mean resources, they bank account, social security, 401ks, bonds, um, everything is in the bank. If the bank fell, we all fell. We all in trouble. So, you know, of course, we're not in a higher, higher class. People that are in a higher, higher class, more chances are some of them have their assets overseas and their banking system. But if you see, it always go back to the bank. So, it, we we we're gonna deep dive this one here today, um, cause I was doing my research heavy on it because I was just so curious, you know, on the banking system. So it, it taught me a lot of things too, and not only that, it taught me to not leave your money in the bank to make sure your money's out there working for you. Leave your money in the bank in a savings account in a checking account is not really a good good look because what happened in the situation that transpired with Center Car Valley Bank, and that was a like a a well another well established bank. Then a lot of people would be in trouble, like a Bank of America or um, Chase or Wells Fargo. Those type of banking systems where they have millions of people in those banks. So, this is, I think it's a learning lesson for everybody. And not only that, but guys, this is not the first time this happened. This happened in 2007, 2008, when it came to the housing crisis. A bank also collapsed as well. But, like the same situation that transpired, that the FDIC came in. Handle this situation and return everybody's money. But let's hear Joe Biden talks about it. Assets. And over the weekend, it took control of Signature Bank's assets. Treasury Secretary Yellen and a team of banking regulators have taken action, immediate action. And here are the highlights. First, all customers who had deposits in these banks can rest assured, I'm going to rest assured they'll be protected and they'll have access to their money as of today. That includes that was businesses yesterday, across the country Monday. that bank there and need to make payroll, pay their bills, and stay open for business. No losses will be, and I'm on, this is an important point, no losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Let me repeat that. No losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Instead, the money will come from the fees that banks pay into the deposit insurance fund. Because of the actions of that, because of the actions that our regulators have already taken, Every American should feel confident that their deposits will be there if and when they need them. Second. Um, I'm a very strong advocate of Robert Kiyosaki. He always talks about how savers are losers. And this is the reason why. Because when you say this, this situation like this transpire, now your money is gone. Now you're in a rut. Now, you, now you're struggling to find ends meet. But if your money was allocated somewhere else or some form of else of resources, you could be able to pull out of that money and then... Boom. You you save it. You save it and you don't have nothing to worry about. That's what people gotta understand something. You, you, people wanna understand economics. If you wanna really understand, understand economics, study the bank. When you deposit your funds to the bank account, the money the bank takes your money and already lends it out to other people, to other businesses, to other stocks, and to other bonds, and to other mutual funds. They don't keep it in the bank. They they let the money continue to make make money for them. So I was like, okay, I find that to be very interesting. That's why I studied the banking system. I was like, okay, cool. So they don't keep the money. When you deposit the money, your money don't, is not there. It says it's there. Yes, it's there. And that's why some people that have money in the savings account, they, like, they only get 0.001% in 
in a savings account because the money is gone. And whatever money that you have, let's say, for example, you have $1,000. That $1,000 now, the bank take that $1,000 and give it out to someone that's trying to buy a home. Or give it out to someone that's trying to um, that's trying to open a business. Or give it out to, um, to the federal government. So they could try to make interest for you and they give you that interest, which is the 0.1%. Which is nothing. But if you yourself think like the way the bank think, you would take that money yourself and put that money. Remember, this is not financial advice, but however, I did learn something from some financial gurus on social media. And not only that, but me doing my own personal research, that you can actually take the money, put it in the stocks that give you dividends. And in that, you make it triple, double the money they have, still didn't have your money sitting in the savings account. That's why a lot of banks, if you see that you have a certain amount of money in the bank, the bank retailer, like a financial advisor at the bank, will come to you and say, hey, I don't think you should be putting out much money in the savings account. You should probably put it in a mutual fund, a mutual stocks, bond, or put it in some type of property so you can make double the money instead of living here in the bank because if you live it with us, pretty much, we're going to make the money from, it, from, from, from the interest while you just only make it 0.1%. The management of these banks will be fired. If the bank is taken over by FDIC, the people running the bank should not work there anymore. Third, and, and then people want to know why Biden are holding the bank management accountable because of the simple fact how they handled the situation. They was not supposed to allow the people to panic the way the people panicked last week, Friday. They were supposed to handle in the situation in a way that it would have kept people calm, neutral, and say, hey, no worry. We'll make sure your money is refunded back to you. You don't have nothing to worry about. But stuff like this is not supposed to be happening, especially right now at this time, especially on a Friday where there is payroll. They're trying to pay people their money. It was a 60 situation that transpired over there in Silicon Valley. Investors in the banks will not be protected. They knowingly took a risk, and when the risk didn't pay off, how capitalism works. Fourth, there are important questions of how these banks got into the circumstances in the first. But remember, you, you, you see how I mentioned the simple fact of investors. Investors will not be refunding back their money because why? Because they took a risk. Some risk you take when it comes to like stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. If you take that risk, then the bank's not accountable or whatever you lost. So some people that um did their own form of investment that hey, I need my money back. No, because the FDIC, you sign a waiver, a disclosure agreement that whatever happens, that's on you, not on the bank. Place. We must get the full accounting of what happened and why those responsible can be held accountable. In my administration, no one, in my no one is above the law. And finally, we must reduce the risk of this happening again. During the Obama-Biden administration, we put in place tough requirements on banks like Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not going to play the whole thing. You guys can go and check it out um, because it happened yesterday. So you guys go check it out. But at the end of the day, um, because I, we just want to do a really, really quick take on this. Uh, uh, he, he's, he mentioned the simple fact that uh, they're going to make sure it, not, it doesn't happen again. I'm sorry. It, it's going to happen again. I think it's going to happen more often than usual because of the simple fact that uh, people are now panicking. People are no longer trusting the bank, um, as you shouldn't, because at the end of the day, the bank is only supposed to store your money for a certain amount, and you're supposed to use that money to use it for for, for other resources. People become millionaires not by being savers. They become millionaires by being investors and having properties. Keep that in mind. People are becoming millionaires by not being savers, but they become millionaires by having property and investment when you're able to do those things then you you, you you're thinking on a higher bracket and and that's why i said i learned from gurus like warren buffett uh charlie uh, merger uh robert kiyosaki i listen to a lot of these people a lot of these financial gurus because at the end of the day they've been where we was at so they understand they've seen many banks collapse so they understand that and dave ramsley they understand all those situations but so for someone like us in this generation, we got to we gotta learn from the old. Don't throw away everything from the old generation. Learn from it. Study them. And I'm that studying the banking system. So when you have money allocated to Silicon Valley Bank, you already know what to do and know, like, okay, 
I'm not gonna leave too much money in this bank account. I gotta make sure I allocate my my money in other bank accounts. Not only that, but making sure the money is working for me, so I can triple and double my bank. Triple, yeah, my bank, pretty much. My bank. You become monopoly. Now you playing the game. At the end of it, it's a game. Guys, let me know what you think. At the end of it, let me know what you think. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification bell on the right hand side. Remember, we go live on KL Culture Radio on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, six o'clock Eastern Time. Hope to see you there. Um, let me know what you think in the comment about the whole situation with Silicon Valley Bank. Um, they were not, and I'm, and I'm a, and this is another carryout. They were not the only bank that fell also on Friday as well. I think it was first um, Republican Bank, I think, if I'm not mistaken. But you guys do your research. And remember, all the thing, I, everything I say on this platform was pretty much opinion based. Remember, this is, this is a platform where I only talk about trending news and whatever I think what transpired throughout the week. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening to me. And talk to you guys later. Peace.